Do people ever have the feeling that they're working on something they really enjoy, but still, it eventually tires them out? Because honestly, I've been feeling like this. You have certainly exceeded expectations, Marianne. Everything looks so marvelous and in such a short time, too. Though moments like these make all the hard work worth it. Definitely. Well, I can't take all of the credit. People have certainly been enthusiastic about the idea of working on the right mansion. There won't be any more problems unless Mr. Wright has any more objections about the second bedroom. Oh, no, no. We proceed with that room as planned. I already agreed to him having his greenhouse and his vineyard and his stables. He may as well let me have this one thing. We're only about halfway done, but the honest satisfaction on a client's face is enough for me to push through. Let's face it, in between my exasperation at Mr. Wright's antics and her, I've been burning the candles at both ends. I can't even close my eyes without seeing a dead girl's face. Ugh. Dead girl, dud. She's dead. I have to keep reminding myself that burning my feelings as deep as they buried her body, six feet under. I shouldn't waste so much time on someone who's supposed to be gone. I wasted so many years thinking about her already. There should be no need to bother myself with the dead, when I should be bothering myself with the living. Too bad the living are usually as complicated, if not more, than ghosts of the past. But don't you have a party? Mm, yes. But Luke's just being a sweetie, you see. That friend he's visiting. He's having marital problems and he's just trying to cheer him up. It's even more complicated when he, the living in question is a pair of rich and famous social... Sociality is way past their honeymoon phase. And I've been somehow roped into being a relationship counselor. They've been married for a long time and they've hit a... How do they say it? A rough patch. His wife has a drinking problem and can be very neglectful. The poor thing really does his best to be a good husband. But it's never enough for her. Sometimes I think it's the years. Maybe it's been so long that they've lost that romantic spark. What do you think? If I'm going to be completely honest, I need to ask. This is about you and Mr. Wright, isn't it? Suppose it is. What would you tell me? Then, I tell you it's none of my business. I tell you that I don't want to meddle. But, if the troubled husband with the neglectful wife asked me for my honest opinion, I'd say that he shouldn't base his happiness and his self-worth on someone else. Maybe he should try being independent for a while. See what it's like when he isn't trying to please someone else and doing things for himself. Everyone's supposed to be their own man or woman, right? A bit of breathing room never hurt anyone. We shouldn't let our fear control our lives. Why she thinks a single woman like me would be the best source of relationship advice is beyond me. Still, I talk and answer to the best of my abilities. Without realizing it, I'm already pouring out a part of me that I had thought were long gone. I like to believe my words will be of some help to Miss Wright, Mrs. Wright. If I'm honest though, they are of some help to me, like some weight I've been taking off my shoulders. Lorraine. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party! Oh, you really must, Marianne! The weight of what happened to her hasn't left me yet, did it? Maybe. I'll try to stay in chat. Maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. Busy, busy, busy! You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends, and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees, at least. If it wasn't for them, I'd never even heard of you. Maybe it's about time we change that. We'll see. So, if I can be excused? Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. Because, believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later. Though I shouldn't dwell on the dead, I shouldn't just callously forget about them too. Saying that I have work left to do is an easy enough excuse to make. I know how other people see me. They see someone so obsessed with her craft that she would so easily miss things like a party for it. Outside the parlor, people hurry about here and there in 
preparation for Wright's grand housewarming party. None spare me a glance as I slip past them, each working on their appointed roles and not daring to slack off while they work for what is probably the most powerful couple in Luxbourne. I make it into the kitchen with ease, the wine cellar being my final destination. Not the wine cellar! You're gonna die! <laughs> no, no, there's nothing there now. We would have heard it otherwise, I'm sure. Um, I was just thinking about... Uh... Yeah, okay, so it is the same day that the party is going to happen, which is, well, today. Alright, gotcha. But when, it, but when is a great task ever simple? Probably never. And this is a great task, isn't it? My greatest one yet that is worthy of being called a quest. I'm not acting as Marianne McCullough, the professional interior designer, when I chose to lie about being too busy for a party. I'm Marianne McCullough, a lawful neutral cleric with nine points in wisdom and eight in charisma. <laughs> Just thinking of it like that makes it a bit cheesy. But it helps with the fear. It helps overcome the insane thought that I'm actively seeking out something that has been plaguing me for years. I might face my worst nightmare, or I might see, see nothing and find myself... My, no, wait. Are you going to... What, what are you going to the wine cellar? This is not good. No, 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 no. Wait, I just realized. I was just so busy, you know, focusing on actually reading and... No, don't, 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 don't go to the mirror. Don't go to the mirror. Are you gonna... No, <laughs> she might die. I'm worried. She might actually die because... No, don't go to the mirror. No. Okay, I might face my worst nightmare, or I might see nothing and find my self-imagined grand quest to fall flat. And who would have thought that the gatekeeper to my final quest would be someone I thought would be a valuable ally? Snell! Hurry up, you snails! We are on a deadline and you are wasting my time! The butler comes from the cellar and into the kitchen, tailed by a couple of others. People who I assume are most likely chefs and bartenders. He raises a bro, seeing me just standing there, by the hatch, by the trapdoor. It almost looks like he's going to throw me out of for being in the kitchen without permission. But then, he motions for the others to disappear and familiarize themselves with their surroundings. Meanwhile, he continues to stand there, preventing entry into the darkness beyond. What are you doing here, Fraulein? This is not the place for guests or in an architect right now. Don't go, jeez. I, I did not want this to happen. I, you know, this probably wouldn't have happened if I had chose to stay on, on like, the first floor or grand floor or whatever it was called, you know, with Luke. Gosh, jeez, this sucks. Don't die. I request you leave. I was just looking around for any last minute things, yes? Yes, you have been doing that a lot. Looking around, snooping about. Now is not the time for such things. If you're not careful, people might think you are up to something. The look he gives me as he says this is almost chilling. If life was a game book, he'd probably be the true neutral warlock guarding the treasure room. A difficult opponent to beat with nine points in wisdom and eight in dexterity. Well, I'm not done yet. I actually need to go into the wine cellar. Just need a quick go at the place. So just don't mind me. I I'll be out of your hair soon enough. Go outside. Enjoy the party. Bask in the praise and adulation they will no doubt shower you with when the madam speaks highly of you. Surely you've had enough of this stuffy old kitchen by now. You do not want to cause trouble. Both the Bratwurst and Hannah want this to be perfect. It would be a disservice and a disrespect to tow out of line and risk it being anything otherwise. And more importantly, I will be blamed for any failure that happens tonight. His intervention almost turns me away. Maybe this is a sign I'm not meant to see Lorraine out. To seek, not see, to seek Lorraine out. But... Please, I just... It's really important. I'm, and I'm really worried right now. I'm so worried. I mean, I can only hope that this is actually her way of, like she said, like, get get over it, get over the past, get, you know? But I don't know about this, because that's not really her. Oh, I'm so worried. Fifteen minutes. Nine. Ten minutes. 
Any longer and I'll pull you out of there myself. The Bratwurst would be furious if he thinks anyone is touching his precious vine without his permission. Thank you. This seriously means a lot. He steps aside begrud be begrudgingly. <laughs> At this point, it looks like there's no turning back. Uh, I'm so worried. No, I'm so worried now. <sighs> no, I don't want this. I don't want to do this. There's the mirror. Jeez. This is like... This is really creepy. <laughs> the cellar creates me ominously as I descend. The space feels smaller with a lot more bottles slinging the wall compared to before and knowing what might be waiting for me here makes things worse. The mirror that I had been moved from the study is my goal. I did not return to it after my initial discovery, but the thought of Lorien, how much I want to see her again even if it's just for one more time, keeps coming back to me. As I walk through the cellar, I have to stop when I feel something crunch beneath my feet. What is it? Oh. Whatever few bottles were left behind here are now nothing but glass under my heels. Perhaps dropped by one of the many chefs and bartenders that Butler had escorted through here before. And it made a downright mess, with red slick pulling from the remnants of a good drink. With how dark this place is, a person with a dark enough imagination can easily mistake it for blood. Don't, don't, don't go there now, girl. Just don't. I can't help but think it is, despite the easy, logical explanation that had come to my mind only because of what I'm about to do. It's merely a momentary distraction as I continue to the end of the cellar where the mirror stands. Propped up on the far wall, it gleams innocently while pretending to be a simple and ordinary mirror. How morbid to think this thing can show a person their deepest, most desperate with desires, and then twists it to an image to the dark. Oh jeez, I don't... That's what I had seen that day. Though I heard Lorian many times, I had only seen her here within its frame. I wonder if people have discovered it before. How many were wasted away in front of it, and not moored, and how many were frightened away by what they saw. Yet as I stand before it now, nothing. I can barely see my own reflection in this darkness. How does this even work? Mirror, mirror on the wall? Something? Anything? Nothing. Touching a surface doesn't make it magically activate or anything like that. There is no sudden search for power and I'm not suddenly granted sight. It stays what it is. A mirror. Was Lorian's appearance in the mirror all some sort of fever dream? Am I really that burdened with guilt and despair that my mind would eat itself in my stress and have me hallucinate such things? Either way, just going here on some crazed obsession for a girl long gone must warrant me a trip to a doctor. Already, I feel ill. After a few more minutes, in the hopes that something would change, I turn around to leave. I can just go back upstairs like nothing ever happened, perhaps drop by at a party for some house devour, and then go home and collect myself. Besides, Mrs. Wright is expecting me and I'm- Going to leave me again then, are you? Shit. <laughs> I stop in my tracks, but I don't turn back. As much as it pains me, I don't look back. If I'm just hearing her again, desperately delusional, and I look back to see nothing, I don't want to give myself false hope. But when I feel fingers around my wrists pull at me, I look back in shock. What the... My first thought is, how in God's name is this possible? And the second is, Lorraine. Her hands are cold. Are you that mad at me that you're just going to ignore me, Marianne? I don't know what to say, and I can only stare at her in wonder. She stands there, in the mirror, with only her arm extended outward for my sake. I look at the hand still holding my wrist, and when she sees me looking at it, she moves it so that our hands are interwined, fingers weaved together. Seeing her there and feeling her touch meant I'm not crazy, though, however, 
impossible and explainable thing. Ex unexplainable, this is all to me right now. However impossible. Oh, jeez. Okay. Sorry about that. It just takes my breath away. Pulling it out from there is tempting. I can imagine doing so with ease. We can be together again. Lorraine and Marianne. Like nothing had ever happened. But that would be all a great big lie, wouldn't it? What? Pack out your tongue? Don't just look at me like that! Say something! Even if this thing were some magic portal that could bring back the dead, that doesn't erase anything. Just looking at her, still a young teenager while I'm already a grown woman, it serves no other reason than to break the illusion that blinds me. I've seen her twice now, always behind a mirror. If this is real, if this isn't some delusion, then why can't she only exist behind a glass? Yeah. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. It's been so long. You don't look happy. I really am happy. But at the same time, I can't help but think about what happened to you. And what does that mean? What are you saying? She gives me this peculiar look. And before my eyes, she moves to step out of the mirror. In turn, I wrench my hand from her and take a step back, almost as if I'm afraid. I don't know how this is possible. But whatever this is, it isn't real. You can't be real. I'm right here, aren't I? What other proof do you need? This is really strange. I'm confused, to be honest. No, no. I see you. I hear you. I feel you. No, it's a trick. But even with all that, you can't be real. You just can't. I saw your body. I helped bury you. You're dead. A deep hurt crosses her face and it just breaks my heart in two, seeing her weird expression. Burying me wasn't the only thing you did. Don't you dare lie. But I'm going to be the bigger woman, aren't I? Let bygones be bygones. I'll forgive you. As long as you stay with me, Marianne. No, 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 I'm not gonna die. You're not gonna die. Oh, this is... Oh, no. I, I feel like this is game over for her. Shit. That's why you came down here, right? To find me? That was the plan. I came down here looking for her for closure. But this isn't... This isn't just closure. This is something else entirely. I didn't think I would be forced to make such a choice. Oh, do I leave or do I stay? Should I stay or should I go? Do -do. Should I stay or should I go? Obviously, we are going to move on. I'm still relieved that I got an answer because, you know, you know. I mean, a choice. I can't talk. <laughs> I need to move on, obviously. Cause, no, just because I want to say, like, we're gonna die if we... No. Closure. Oh, closure. That's all I came here for. Whatever this is, it might as well all just... All be just a devil's trick. And I might as well make some use of it, right? I say nothing at first for fear of angering whatever phantom this is. I take Lorianne's hand and bring it up to my lips, pressing a kiss to her knuckles. She takes it as some sort of invitation to pull me along, to step back into the mirror until only her arm is extended again. I should have been more honest back then, both to you and myself. I know it's too late. I'm sorry, but... But the thought of being with the dead did not agree with me, not one bit. I can't stay with you. My first love. Goodbye, my first love. So what? You're going to leave me for some old trophy wife? That's it, isn't it? You're going to leave poor Amy Lorraine and go after the next rich, pretty blonde that you see? No, we're going after Rose. No. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm still doing this. I meant Rebecca. What, what is wrong with me? Why am I messing that up? Their names aren't that similar. We're going after Rebecca, but I haven't had a chance to go after Rebecca, so I don't know. If I can, but hey. Because we're not like that close yet, but you know. This is a mistake. All these years, guilt has been my driving force. I felt so guilty for what I did. 
what I didn't do. She thinks she can guilt me into being com com complacent, but she realizes as otherwise as I pull my hand from her. And going by the look of anger in her face, and anger that runs cold, she did not like the fact that I'm not some puppet on a string. Had she chosen her words carefully, I would have accepted whatever punishment Lorien chooses to give me. Chooses to give me. Guilt had ran my life, and it might have very well ended it. Because I deserved it. But what I did, I did to me. The blood in my hands is mine, not yours. Whoever or whatever this shadow is, my gut tells me she's not Lorien. Yet, I keep talking as if she is. I broke your heart, not your neck. Don't you dare deny it! It was your fault! Because I loved you more than I dared to admit? Yes, that was my fault. But I never meant to hurt you like that. Despite my words, no matter how sincere they are, she appears angry. And rage, in fact. It's been years since I last saw that face, and even now, the memory of it is still etched etched deeply in my mind. The hurt, the tears, and the haze spilling from her eyes that day, the moment I rejected her, rejected myself for who I am, and she definitely will hate what I am about to do next. To my left, a wine rack. And from there, I take a bottle and pray to all the saints I can remember. For all my sins, for every hurtful words I've uttered, for what I have driven her to do that day, what I forced her into. What are you doing? I do it without thinking twice. Quickly, before I can hesitate, I grab a bottle and send it straight towards the mirror. <coughs> Shards of the bottle on the mirror are sent flying everywhere as Lorian's screams echo in the cellar. Bitter. S searing. Like every wounding accusation she hurled at me. They never left me, I doubt they ever will. But with this, I can move away from them, from her, live my life as I should, free from the burden. Her burden. Because the Lorian I know, the real one, the person I loved, will never want me carrying this to my death. As the screaming dies down, I can't help but mutter weakly. It's done! It's done! <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. Oh, Lorraine! Forgive me, Lorraine. <gasps> I take some time to compose myself, breathing in and out, stamping down on the tremors, still racking my hands, straightening out my jacket and fixing my hair. All a weak attempt at returning myself to someone resembling my normal self. This would probably be easier to do so with a mirror, but I likely won't be able to stand looking at one for a long time. Well now, I should probably go back up there. Party to attend, rich socialites to do business with and food to eat. Mrs. Wright will be happy if I make some time for it anyway. Yet one last time to the shattered glass beneath my feet. I'm sorry, Lorraine. May you see God's light on the path. Turning around to leave, and for good this time, the uneasy smile on my face falls as I see Lorraine whole and well. Come on, Mac. You really didn't think it would be that easy, did you? You get bonus points for trying, but you should know an eight in charisma is not enough to turn undead. She advances towards me, backs me against the wall. I can't even reach for another wine bottle without putting myself within her reach. This might... Despite my earlier bravado, I didn't think she'll be able to exist at all without the mirror. Can you blame me though? It's not like I'm an expert on the supernatural. That's not... You shouldn't be... What? Out of the mirror? Did you think just moving on will erase what you did to me? You're nothing but a murderer, Marianne! A murderer! Stay back! You're not real! Leave me alone! Stop! I'm trying to move on with my life, so why won't you let me? Please! Just get out of my head and leave me be! I try to find an exit when there's a click. The next thing I know, I'm falling back into darkness. What? Behind closed doors? What is going on? 
I felt I don't want to watch it read the journal in case there are spoilers for what's about to happen, but I'm a freaking in a prison cell. What the hell? What was this what happened to that lady who lived who is haunting them? What the shit? I, I fall on my back and a door slams shut behind me. In a daze, I look around warily and find myself in another room entirely. On the other side of the wall, some sort of secret passage perhaps. An underground tunnel that has me wary and frightened. It also proves that the oddities in Dimensions floor plans are a lot more than just little discre- Exactly, just little discrepancies. Discrepancies? I don't even- I expect Lorraine to jump out of me from the darkness at any time. A breeze blowing through the tunnel has me relieved though, at the idea that there is still a way to escape should that happen. That is way better than being trapped in underground with only god knows what that was. A funny thought comes to mind as I start walking to where the exit might be. I think about how Mrs. Fried would be so disappointed if I didn't show up to the party. I imagine how furious Mr. Wright would be for breaking one of his wine bottles. Even Johan's reaction comes to mind, though I don't really know with that guy. One thing's for sure is that I would be calling Cam and Haruna for a drink as soon as I get out of here. No, this is... Oh, gee, no. You're so dead now, aren't you? Oh. That noise has me wary. A ghastly thing. A corpse of a woman leans on the wall. Her arms and limbs, almost every inch of her light, lithe body is peppered with wounds and rotting flesh. And it is then that the putrid smell of blood and gore hits me, making it so that I don't even question how I missed it in the first place. How long has this been here? So this is where she's... Oh no, this is sad. I wonder what happened to her. <sighs> oh, that smell! Oh, you're a nasty one, aren't you? Flinch as the thing twitches. No, 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 no! Oh no, <laughs> no, no! Okay, this is actually a bit, a bit frightening. And as soon as it opens its eyes and looks at me with a smile, there's nothing in my mind but horror. I break into a run. I try to keep on running, no matter how much my legs and feet scream at me to stop. I keep going, even I look back and see nothing of her anymore, because I can still hear her. Scampering at her feet, the words she tries to form with her bloodied mouth, and the painful sounds of bones grinding against each other, as she moves closer and closer to me. <sighs> How long are these damn tunnels? <sighs> There's a split second where I know that thing is right behind me, a strange, strange sensation creeping over my limbs when her presence looms over me. And then suddenly, I can't even do anything before I'm yanked by the hair and pulled back. Still, I struggle up until I'm thrown to the side like some rag doll. I hit the ground on my side and the musty smell of old hay that reach, reaches me is my only indication that I'm still alive. Please don't hurt me! My body hurts and I keep my eyes shut tight, afraid of what might happen next. What's wrong, Marianne? Are you really afraid of little old me? There's only dread seeing how she's following me even here. She looms over me, backs me further in the cell that I was thrown in. Please, it's so cold. I don't want to be alone, Marianne. Why won't you stay with me? Why would you leave me? Why? What are you? <laughs> Shit. Shit. You know, I think it was kind of. Oh, jeez. I just want to share this thoughts with you now. And I mean, you know, you saw that she had a dream about how Lorraine and uh, Mrs. Wright were basically like the same person. No, I'm not going to read it yet. Um, you know, they, they shared the body, but they had, you know, 
their own their heads their <laughs> their own heads um but i was just thinking that perhaps the whole guide for morian's survival would be like don't befriend hana and thinking that is it and now she's just she screwed him no <laughs> i feel so bad for her but she's screwed no i guess unless someone can save her i don't know if they can maybe hopefully hopefully like <sighs> The gang can save him, like Rebecca, Ashton, Luke. I don't know, maybe. Wow. What if he becomes like, what if he turns out to be like the hero at the end, even though he's like shitty? That would have been interesting. Um, but yeah. Uh, so perhaps not. Perhaps you should have just ignored Hana as much as possible. Because that was the reason why we, you know found the mirror again because we were at that floor jeez okay Lorraine turns and shifts into that thing from before and with that same gruesome grin he takes a step forward towards the cell towards me I barely scramble to my knees when the door to the cell slams shut and it just stands there staring is that a camera or something? Like I'm, I'm a bit confused about them. what this is. This is this like, or, or Luke and I. Mean, I don't. I'm just. I'm just so confused right now. Again, <laughs> great. Like, why is there a camera there? Did she? Ha she didn't bring a camera. So they they've been down here. Someone's been down here recently. Shouts for help ring out in the tunnels. But none of them are coming for me. I'm more paralyzed and shocked by what is happening. What? My throat tightens. <laughs> being fooled by the image of Lorraine. At the thought of being trapped down here. So then... Where? Help me! Help me! Oh, help me! Are you getting all this on camera, Carl? Wait, what? Oh my gosh, so this has happened to people in the past? Holy shit, that's it! Oh no! Oh my gosh! Yeah, this has happened before. Wow. Yeah, but are you going sure this is a good idea? We're breaking and entering here. Don't worry, the owners of this place haven't been here in a long time. Oh. Look at this thing, though! It has writing in blood like some cheesy 80s horror prop. Wait, I have an idea. Oh man, that's genius! What kind of butt hair would even take this thing seriously? Maybe we can stick this in Rowan's backpack. That's why his kid would panic. Guys? Guys? Frank gone wrong. Oh, jeez. Wow, this is... What? Spit it out! Behind you! There, in the corner of the cell, a digital camera comes flickering to life, and the video has played back on the screen. They just instantly died. Wow. It was hard to even consider paying any attention to it, but my life is on the line. But when the ghost doesn't move and the teenagers mocking shouts of help me fill the cell, I just had to watch. And what I had seen, students judging by their same grady uniforms. They were holding that letter! And that thing, the woman, she... <laughs> Whoa. Hey, nice. I like the, I'm just just shout out. I thought that was really nicely done. <laughs> oh no, we're trapped here. I'm so sorry. Rebecca, save Marianne, please. No. This is how it begins, or so they say. No, Lorraine. No, uh, not Lorraine. What am I? Marianne. <laughs> Lorraine, don't- oh no. 
I should not have followed her. Darn it, Hana, you tricked me. Or, you were so gorgeous and beautiful and just wanted to make Mariana happy. No. Oh. And that led to her possible death. Jeez. I need to replay this now to see like what would happen if I didn't follow him and uh, I'm so curious. I, I mean if I had followed right, Mr. Right. What a day for well Mariana. Jeez, Marianne. Desperate to deal with her painful past, Marianne McCullough excused herself from attending the housewarming party to search for Amy Lorraine without the mansion. Within. Within. <laughs> without the mansion. What? Within the mansion. Seeing her ghost in the wine cellar, however, a realization hit her and she finally let go. I'm just destroying the mood altogether. While trying to escape the phantom dis. Disguising as her friend, Marianne discovered an underground prison hidden in the deepest corners of the manager, mansion. Now trapped in one of its cells, she found a recording left behind by some of the mansion's victims. Wow, this is gruesome and creepy and stuff. Oh, you know, I know this was a really short episode, but yeah, I think this is for the best because... I I uh, don't have as much time to record like this week, so uh, I'll see you guys and we'll be playing as Rebecca and wait, I'm just no, I don't know which day it, I didn't look at which day it was, but whatever. I hope I really hope that Marianne can be saved because otherwise I'll just feel so bad. I was so I was I thought it, that uh, Sack was the one who was going to. Would get haunted, but you know, now we seem like he didn't have a, ba a bad ending, you know. So that's good. Uh, and jeez, Marianne, I'm so sorry. I just wanted you to f find, you know, I just wanted to help you find a lady. <laughs> oh well. Bye, guys. <laughs>